Hello everyone, myself Sanket and today we are going to learn about anti-TB drugs. I have tried to keep this topic as simple yet as informative as possible. And I would also be highlighting few points of clinical relevance which will surely make this topic more interesting. But before going to anti-TB drugs, let us first see few points about tuberculosis. Why is it important for us to learn about TB? Because India has the highest number of TB cases in the whole world. Tuberculosis is caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is an acid fast bacilli. The cell wall of acid fast bacilli consists of following structures, out of which the structures which are important to us are arabinogalactin and mycolic acid. Mycolic acid protects the bacteria from destruction by macrophages. Therefore, the drugs which inhibit mycolic acid or arabinogalactin synthesis will disrupt the cell wall and kill the bacteria. There are different subpopulations of TB bacilli in an infected person, which includes rapidly growing bacteria which are present in the wall of cavitary lesion where oxygen tension is high. The drugs which kill this bacteria will decrease the bacillary load and the patient will become sputum negative, therefore non-contagious to other people. Other bacteria are slow growing which are located intracellularly and the spurters which are located within the caseous material where the oxygen tension is low. The drugs which inhibit this bacteria will prevent the relapse in the future. Lastly, the dormant bacteria. No anti-TB drugs are found to act against them. Let us see the classification of anti-TB drugs. Group 1 consists of first-time oral drugs which include isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol. Group 2 are the injectable drugs which consists of streptomycin, canamycin, amikacin and capriomycin. Group 1 and 2 are the most commonly used drugs. Group 3 are the fluoroquinolones, which consists of moxifloxacin, levofloxacin, ofloxacin and ciprofloxacin. Group 4 are the second line oral drugs which include ethionamide, propionamide, cyclosine, terizidone, paraaminosalicylic acid, rifabutin and rifapentin. Group 5 drugs are the drugs which have unclear efficacy and higher toxicity. They include newer drugs such as bedaculine, delamanid, retomanid, sutazolid and other drugs like clarithromycin, clofazimine, linezolid, coamoxiclab, imipenem or silastatin. Let us begin with isoniazid. Isoniazid is a bactericidal drug which acts against fast growing bacteria which are located both intracellularly and extracellularly. It is effective in both acidic as well as alkaline medium. It is an excellent drug and is an essential component of all the anti-TB regimens. But its action on other atypical mycobacteria is absent. Let us see the mechanism of action of isoniazid. Isoniazid is converted by the mycobacterial catalyst for oxidase enzyme which is coded by the CADG gene into its active form. The active form of isoniazid then combines with the ACTM that is acyl carrier protein and Cas A which is a keto acyl carrier protein synthetase to form a complex. This complex then inhibits the mycolic acid synthesis. Another gene INHA synthesizes an NADH dependent acyl carrier protein reductase. Mechanism of resistance. There are two types of resistance, high level resistance and low level resistance. The high level resistance is the most common type of resistance. It is because of mutation in the CADG gene which prevents the conversion of the prodrug into its active form. But it cannot be overcome and sometimes cross resistance to ethanamide is seen. The low level resistance is due to mutation in the INHA gene which prevents the formation of the complex. This can be overcome by using high doses of isoniazid and no cross resistance with other drugs is seen. Other mechanisms of resistance include promoter mutation in the AHPC gene and mutation in the Cas A gene. The AHPC gene is a gene which is involved in protection of cells from oxidative stress. Pharmacokinetics Isoniazid is metabolized in the liver by N-acetylation. The acetylation is of two types, the fast acetylation 
and the slow acetylation seen in different types of people. In Indian, slow acetylation is prevalent. Depending upon the speed of acetylation, the T halves are variable, which are 1R and 3R respectively. In people who have fast acetylation, the effect of the drug will be less, and in people who have slow acetylation, the side effects will be more. Isoniazid is an enzyme inhibitor. The importance of this point will be seen later. Adverse effects. The most important dose dependent toxic effect is the neurologic effect, which consists of peripheral neuritis, paresthesia, and numbness. They are seen mainly because of two reasons. First, isoniazid interferes with the production of active coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate from pyridoxin, and second, it increases the excretion of pyridoxin. Therefore, pyridoxin is given prophylactically to patients of diabetes mellitus, chronic alcoholics, malnourished people, and women who are pregnant and lactating. A dose of 10 mg per day is given. But if the neurologic toxicity is already present, pyridoxin in a dose of 100 mg per day is used. Hepatitis is also a major adverse effect. It is commonly seen in elderly and alcoholics. Isoniazid must be stopped at the first sign of hepatotoxicity. Other adverse effects like lethargy, rash, arthralgia can also be seen. The next drug is rifampicin. Rifampicin is bactericidal in action. It affects all types of bacteria but specifically acts on sporters. It kills bacteria which are present both intracellularly as well as extracellularly and it acts in slightly acidic medium. It kills the bacteria such as Mycobacterium leprae and Mycobacterium avium complex. The mechanism action of rifampicin. We all know that the process of transcription, that is, formation of mRNA from DNA, requires DNA dependent RNA polymerase. This RNA polymerase consists of multiple subunits, out of which beta subunit is important for us. This beta subunit is encoded by the RPOB gene. What rifampicin does is, it comes and it binds the beta subunit and prevents the process of transcription. The resistance is mainly due to RPOBG. Pharmacokinetics It is to be taken on empty stomach because food inhibits its absorption. It is metabolized in the liver to a deacetylated product which is mainly excreted in bile and it further undergoes enterohepatic circulation which is responsible for its variable T half which is 2 to 5 hours. It is an enzyme inducer. Previously, we had seen that isoniazid is an enzyme inhibitor. So, if we fuse both together, they will balance each other's effect theoretically, but practically, the effect is variable. Rifampicin also induces metabolism of contraceptive pills, which leads to contraceptive failure. So, an increase in dose of OC pills or shift to other contraceptive method is recommended. Adverse effect Hepatitis is the main adverse effect, which can also lead to jaundice, and discontinuation of the drug is required. Second, it imparts orange color to urine, sweat, and tears. This should be notified to the patients beforehand, so that they will not worry as this effect is harmless. Sometimes cutaneous reactions like flushing, pruritus, rash can be seen. Flu-like symptoms like chills, fever, and headache are also seen, and rarely thrombocytopenia and nephritis. The main motive of using it, this drug is that it can kill organisms which are sequestered in abscess and lung cavities. The next drug is pyrazinamide. Pyrazinamide is bactericidal in action, but its activity is less than that of isoniazid. It kills the slow growing and residual intracellular bacteria, therefore, it is also known as sterilizing agent. It is best active in acidic pH, and action on other atypical mycobacteria is absent. Mechanism of action. Pyrazinamide enters the bacteria and is converted by an enzyme which is mycobacterial pyrazinamidase into an active form which is the pyrazinoic acid. This pyrazinoic acid has two functions. It inhibits the mycolic acid synthesis and second, it disrupts the mycobacterial cell membrane and transport function. The resistance is due to impel uptake and mutation in the PNCA gene. Pharmacokinetics properties. 
First, it has good penetration into the CSF in case of meningitis. It is metabolized in the liver and excreted by the kidney. Its T half is 8 to 11 hours. Adverse effects. Pyrazinamide is the most hepatotoxic drug amongst all the anti-TB drugs. It can also cause hyperuricemia and gout. Other adverse effects like abdominal distress, arthralgia, flushing, rash and fever can also take place. The main motive behind using this drug is that it decreases the duration of treatment and the risk of relapse. Next drug is Ethambutol. Ethambutol is bacteriostatic in action. It acts on fast multiplying and extracellular bacteria. It is active at both acidic as well as basic pH and action on other atypical mycobacteria is also seen. Mechanism of action Normally, the EMDB gene synthesizes an enzyme which is known as arabinosyl transferase. This arabinosyl transferase is required for the polymerization reaction of arabinoglycan into arabinogalactin, which is a part of the cell wall. Ethanbutol, it comes and it inhibits this arabinosyl transferase. The resistance is mainly due to mutation in the EMDB gene. This resistance emerges rapidly, therefore it is given only with other drugs. Pharmacokinetics It is mainly excreted in urine, therefore changes in the dose is required in case of renal failure. Its T half is of 4 hours. Adverse effects The most important dose and duration dependent toxic effect is of retrovulbar neuritis, which causes loss of visual acuity, loss of color vision and visual field defects. Therefore, periodic visual testing of these patients is required. The drug should be stopped at the first indication of the visual impairment. Remember that this visual toxicity is reversible, but in young children it is relatively contraindicated as their visual assessment is quite difficult. Other adverse effects include nausea, rash and rarely peripheral neuritis. The main reason of using this drug is that it prevents the development of resistance to other drugs and it increases the rate of sputum conversion. The next drug is streptomycin. Streptomycin is bactericidal. It acts on fast-growing and extracellular bacteria. It is active at neutral or basic pH. We will see later why it is not active at acidic pH. An action on other atypical mycobacteria is absent. Mechanism of action Streptomycin diffuses passively across the outer membrane via the porine channels. It is then actively transported across the cell membrane into the cytoplasm by an oxygen dependent process. This active process is coupled with a proton pump which transfers the hydrogen from inside to outside. Therefore, if there is an acidic medium outside the bacteria, the transport of streptomycin will stop. Once it is inside the bacteria, it binds irreversibly to the 30th subunit of the ribosome, the S12 part to be specific. This interferes with the binding of the 30th and the 50th ribosome to the mRNA, which interrupts the binding of the tRNA to the mRNA, inhibiting the formation of the initiation complex. Mechanism of resistance Mutation in the RPSL gene encoding the S12 ribosomal protein and mutation in the RRS gene encoding the 15th ribosome rRNA which is the binding site for the septomycin. Pharmacokinetics Its T half is 2 to 3 hours and it is excreted by the kidney. Adverse effects include ototoxicity which leads to vertigo and hearing loss. This vestibular dysfunction is irreversible. Therefore, it is relatively contraindicated during pregnancy as it might cause deafness in the newborn. Other adverse effects include nephrotoxicity, fever, rash, and pain at the site of injection. It was the first clinically useful anti-TB drug and it is used in addition to other first-hand anti-TB drugs. Now let us see the drugs and the daily doses. Isoniazid is used in a dose of 5 mg per kg per day that is 300 mg per day. Rifampicin is used as 10 mg per kg per day that is 600 mg per day. Pyrazinamide is used as 40 to 50 mg per kg, 
थ्री टाइम्स और टू टाइम्स के बीच डोज ऑफ इथाम्यूटॉल इज फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव एम जी पर के जी डेली एंड सेप्टोमाइसिन इज फिफ्टीन एम जी पर के जी पर डे इंट्रामस्कुलर और इंट्रावीनस फॉर सेवरल वीक थैंक यू